Here is my take on the safety of general aviation. First, let's look at the data. Second, let's consider the causes. And then with those two in mind, I'll tell you my stance on it at the end. First, we do have some data on general aviation accidents, but it's a little bit fuzzy. Let me show you. So data from the NTSB and the FAA showed that there were about 5.6 accidents per 100,000 hours flown in general aviation in 2020. Now that number has come down a little bit over the years. Granted, the hours flown number here is worth taking with a bit of a grain of salt as they're having to do some real estimating as to the overall volume and hours flown in general aviation. But it's a starting point and at least we've got something to work with. What's interesting and worth pointing out here is that there's around one fatality per 100,000 hours flown. There's a lower than 20% chance that the accident is fatal. Now it obviously depends on the accident and the nature of it and stuff, but it's worth noting here that airplane accidents don't automatically mean fatalities. And I think that's something that people really assume and they, and they say, well, hey, if we get into an accident, we're a goner. And the data just really suggests otherwise. Now it's really, really important here when we're looking at the data and okay, per 100,000 hours, here's how many accidents, here's how many fatalities, to not just think that, okay, well, it's just a probability game. It's like playing the lottery in reverse, that every single time I go fly, I hope my number doesn't get picked or else it's my time. That is not how it works. And in fact, I think it's super important to look at the causes of these accidents and the causes of these fatalities to understand really what's driving that. And that's a more practical way to look at this rather than just saying, well, hey, there's an X percent chance that I'm not going to live through flying this year. So per the FAA, the top 10 causes of fatal accidents in general aviation are as follows. Loss of control in flight, controlled flight into terrain, system component failure, power plant, fuel related, unknown or undetermined, system component failure, non-power plant, unintended flight into IMC or, or instrument meteorological conditions, mid-air collisions, low altitude operations, and other. And if you glance through this list, you'll notice that a common theme here is that so many of these are largely avoidable. So let's take a little deeper dive into some of the data. Going over to the computer here, this is the 2019 data set from the NTSB talking about general aviation's accident uh, data, what they call by defining events. Basically, hey, what are the reasons these accidents occurred? The blue is non-fatal accidents, the, the yellow is fatal accidents. I wanna call out a few points on this data set. The first First major culprit of accidents is loss of control on the ground. You weren't even flying. Maybe this is a ground loop, etc. You'll notice there weren't any fatalities here. The, the next biggest one and, and the biggest fatality driver is loss of control in flight. And, and typically where this occurs is a stall or a spin at or below a thousand feet above the ground. So pattern altitude, you end up coming in way too slow. You're trying to turn too hard in an uncoordinated fashion to try to make the alignment with the runway and you accidentally stall spin the aircraft into the ground. It happens and it's so avoidable. And it's so tragic when it happens. As you start learning to fly, you quickly start training for stalls, what it feels like when a stall is oncoming, how to recover from one. Same thing with spins. What does it feel like? How do you get into one? How do you avoid one? It's very, very avoidable. And so this is probably of the things that can hurt you in aviation from the data. Statistically, this is the biggest thing. Losing control in flight typically when you're close to the ground. And so it's good to know, hey, what's within my control? What can I avoid? This is a big one. The next one is power plant issues. I'm going to come back to this because there's some really good data on this. But then if we kind of scroll through the, the remainder of the list and just kind of look for big Big yellow blobs here of kind of fatalities. Um, there's a few that, that that pop up. One is unintended flight into IMC. So you're flying into IFR and you're not instrument rated or you weren't prepared for IFR. It's very, very avoidable. Same thing with controlled flight into terrain. If you look at some of the accident reports, you might see, hey, this person was flying above gross weight at night in the mountains in a thunderstorm. It might sound like hyperbole, but it really does happen. And as you can imagine, it's very, very avoidable. So no disrespect to those pilots. I'm just trying to point out that this is not just like the lottery is calling and all of a sudden the probability comes up and it's your time to go and it was nothing nothing that you could do. Yes, some of that happens. You'll see like bird strikes and some things in here that, that maybe there's a small percentage, but by and large, the things that can hurt you on this list are within your control. But I wanna point out something very, very important here is that when you're looking at the data and you're saying, yeah, this is within my control, this isn't within my control, of the things that are within your control, it's probably not going to be presented to you as, hmm, do I make a stupid decision here or do I make a really good decision here? And it's very obvious okay, pick door A or B. It doesn't really manifest itself like that. In my experience, safety slips in small stages. So if you wonder on some of this data, some of these accident reports, man, how did that guy get into that scenario? How did it end up that he's not instrument rated and it got night and then he flew into IFR? Before you know it, he ended up on the ground uh, and, and, and ended up dying. The, the thing is, it's not like he made the decision, you know what, the weather's bad tonight, it's IFR, I'm not instrument rated, let's give it a go. That wasn't the big obvious decision. It was just a little bit, hey, you know what, I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna get there by sunset, let's just keep pressing forward, there's not really a great place to stop, I don't wanna have to get a hotel. In the meantime, let's keep going. Oh, hey, the weather's, it's kinda coming down, but hey, I can 
still, I can see the runway, I can still see this stuff. That's fine, let's push a little more. I, I've done the same stuff in the mountains where you start pushing into approach that you should have aborted way a long time ago because you, you think, no, I'm, I'm a little high, I'm a little fast, it's okay. Oh, these guys are behind me, I wanna try to get the other way. I can do it, no big deal. It's just one little, little thing at, that adds to the thing behind it. And before you know it, you're in, you're in a tight spot, you're, you're in a bad situation, but every decision to get there didn't feel like a big decision. So when you look at the data and you think, oh, that will never happen to me, the way that it does happen to you, and I can attest to this, is that safety slips in small stages. Now, I said I would come back to engines here. You see that this is number three on this list for accidents, and it's also up there for fatalities. In case you think that, hey, you know what, Th this is a scenario that, hey, my number got called, it was just a probability type thing. Actually, the, the data suggests otherwise. And so AV Web put out an awesome, I mean, a really, really great video on this topic, talking about the reliability of general aviation engines that I'm frankly not gonna attempt to outdo. And if you wanna watch it, I will link it up in the corner and down in the description. But the short version is that they concluded based on the data that really only about 20% of engine related accidents were from a random failure, while well over half was from pilot error, like fuel management and preventative maintenance. Basically, of all the things that can hurt you in aviation, engine failures is one of them, but not the biggest one, and most of those engine failures are avoidable in the first place. Now, even though I'm saying a lot of this is avoidable, and it certainly is, it's really important to know, and I've been learning this lately, so I'm telling myself this too, that just because you had safety in your last flight and it went well, that doesn't somehow carry over and spill over into the next flight to where it's automatically gonna have a higher chance of being a safe one as well. Sure, proficiency and stuff plays a role, but as far as like your own attentiveness to the safety of the flight, the last flight does not matter whatsoever. Every new flight, you're starting from zero. I'm really trying to remember that for myself. I wanted to share that with you too. So with all of that in mind, what's my stance on the safety of aviation? Well, it really comes down to two things. First, you'll see from the data, aviation can be mildly dangerous, but really it can also be very, very safe. And it largely comes down to your own decision making, your commitment to training and proficiency, and taking great care, I mean great care of the airplane, having great maintenance. I feel like if I can commit to those things and be intentional about it, it really shrinks the risk pool from low to very low. Secondly, if I can do everything I can within my control to try to remain safe, and I know I'm not perfect, but I'm trying to get better, I'm okay accepting the remaining risk. Just like we do in the car. I mean, hey, don't text and drive, don't drink and drive, et cetera, do the things that are within your control, but then accept the remaining risk because life driving is worth it to us. Similarly, you know, I really want to live a life of flying and I'm willing to accept what's in my control and make a big deal about that and then not really lose sleep over what isn't in my control. So when I get in the airplane, I'm not afraid of something happening. I'm not shivering in my boots, but I'm definitely aware that something could happen. And I know that my decision making has a massive impact on the safety of the flight. So I'm not scared, but I'm not also turning a blind eye to the risk either. You know, there's a middle ground there and it's one that I'm comfortable with. So that's my take on why I'm comfortable with the safety of general aviation, but I would love to hear your take down in the comments.